Um, before we bring our Gamescom conference or uh, press conference to an end, uh, I've got one last announcement I'd like to make. And it's an announcement I hope that you won't forget. In an industry where risks are often not taken, um, we'd like to take a risk today. We're going to be announcing a new IP with a brand new studio. This studio is Don't Nod Entertainment, based out of Paris. And we're really excited to be working with these highly talented individuals. These guys have worked on titles such as Resident, e uh, sorry, Resident Evil 6, no, <laughs> such as Rainbow Six, Splinter Cell, Heavy Rain, and Burnout. And we believe that this co concept will capture your imagination as it has ours. These individuals um, have also been supported by an artist who is extremely well known for his work with Marvel Comics, uh, graphic novels such as Spawn, and Magic the Gathering. So it gives me great pleasure to announce a new title called Remember Me. Peggy 16. A friend once said, the memory of a single man is a fortress, more complex than the vastest of cities. But we invented a key to the fortress a son's first words, a mother's last words, a lover's kiss, a father's deception. There are no secrets anymore. And if remixing a single memory can change a man's life, then changing a single man could remix the world. That was my job, until someone did it to me. They wiped you clean, Millen. How do I know I can still trust you? Well, thank you, Michael, and good morning, everyone. When we started working on this game, we decided to explore the memory theme. Memories are fascinating. They're unique to everyone, our most intimate treasure, and the personal track record of our perspective on the world. None of us will come out of this room today with the same perspective and memory of what happened here. Our memories are unique, and they largely define who we are which is why we spend so much time sharing them with our friends. And with the rise and revolution of instant content sharing, it has become more and more common to share the most intimate memories with total strangers. It's like everyone in the world knows your favorite memory. <laughs> my favorite memory is the memory of how I got together with my girlfriend. I remember it was a couple of years ago um, in Paris on the 17th of September. And I remember it was a warm summer night. And if you've ever lived in Paris, you know you don't get that many of those. And I had a day scheduled for that night. And the girl was beautiful, mind-blowing. She had green eyes, dark hair, and she looked very much like Katie Holmes, actually. So I was looking very much forward to it. We went to the movies first, and we saw The Town, uh, with and by Ben Affleck. I don't, I don't know if you've seen it. She liked it very much, which was a good thing. I hated it which didn't help, you know, in starting a passionate conversation about movies and our shared interests. So I then took her for dinner in a typical Parisian restaurant. And I remember the amazing food, the beautiful setting, the romantic atmosphere, the candle lights even. 
It was perfect. But unfortunately, I also remember the liter of wine that I had to drink just to ease my nerves, because I don't know about you, but I can get pretty tense in that kind of situation. So anyway, when we got out of the restaurant, I decided to buy myself some time. And I said, why don't we go for a walk? And so we went for a walk, and we walked, and we talked, and we walked some more. And after we walked for about a mile, I suddenly realized that the next metro station was right around the corner. And I told myself, Jean-Max, you know that if you go down those stairs with her, there's no coming back from the friend zone. You've been there, right? <laughs> Um, so I had to find a plan, and I needed to find it quick. It was around 2 in the morning at that time, and I said to myself, well, jump into whichever door there is that is open that has some light inside. That's what we did. Jumped inside, and then looked around, and realized it was a techno party, and probably the worst place I could have taken her to. But it was better than nothing, right? So we stayed there, and we had a couple more drinks, and at some point, somehow, I started dancing, which in retrospect was probably also a bad idea. Um, and it went on like this for about an hour, and I was feeling good, but at some point she came to me and she said, well, I'm feeling a bit tired, and I'm going to leave. And I looked at her, and I realized how much of a failure that entire evening was going to be. And I started to rewind all the events of the night in my head. What if we had seen another movie? What if? I had drunk water instead of wine. What if we had found a jazz party, jazz party sorry, instead of a techno party? What detail could I have changed to make it happen? And as I was immersed in those negative thoughts of mine, suddenly I felt a little hand grabbing mine. And I looked down, it was her hand. And before she left, she said one last thing to me. She said, well, I'm not leaving until you kiss me. And I kissed her. And that's my, my memory of how I got together with my girlfriend, or rather how she got together with me, because she did all the work. And that's definitely my favorite memory till this day. Now, that is a pretty intimate story I just shared with you. I don't know any of you. But now imagine if I could digitize that one memory and give it to you, so you could relive it in your own mind, with your own senses, but with my perception, going through the same roller coaster of emotions that I went through that night. Now imagine cherry-picking your own personal favorite memory and sharing it with the person sitting next to you. In fact, what if we could all have access to all the memories of all the people sitting in this room? Or better yet, imagine if we could all buy, sell, share, or trade any memory in the world. Reliving the night Obama was elected through his own eyes, or the adrenaline rush that Usain Bolt must have felt when he got, off, got out of the starting blocks in the Olympic finals a couple of days ago? Or what if we could delete our painful memories? A divorce? The passing of a loved one, maybe? What if we could forget the pain and the sadness that sometimes weigh us down? All of this is possible in Neo Paris 2084. All the people carry a brain implant at the back of their necks, which you can see. That is called the sensation engine, aka the sensen. It allows them to record and digitize in real time everything that they see, that they hear, that they feel, that they know, and turn that into little memories that they can then trade and exchange freely over the network. It's a brave new world of emotion and knowledge sharing. The company that manufactures the Sensen is called Memorize. And on top of manufacturing the hardware, they also watch over and handle all the memory transfers that happen over the network daily. Now imagine how much power that one single company gets in terms of access to personal information and individual profiling. And what if no one is there to watch the watchman? There is actually a group of underground activists that are fighting against their domination. They call themselves the Errorists, and you get to play the most gifted of them all. Her name is Nilin. She wakes up at the beginning of the game in the Bastille prison and realizes she has had her memory wiped clean. She has lost her identity and embarks on a quest to get it back. She soon learns that she's an elite memory hunter. She has the power to break into your mind and steal your memories. There are no secrets anymore. 
She's guided in her quest by Edge, the leader of the terrorists, as well as her last and only friend. Nidin is going to help Edge take the fight against Memorize a bit further, and in return, she might get her memory back. The mission that we're about to see takes place around halfway through the game, and in it, Nilin is about to break into the Memorize HQ. Now, please allow me to welcome on stage Philippe Moreau, co-lead designer on Remember Me, who will now play through the demo. Your way ain't gonna work. You got a plan B? I'm inside their comms. Building's locked down. You need to track down a Captain Trace and steal his access codes. Careful, sis. He's eccentric and very dangerous. Okay. We need to move. Where can I find him? Give me a second to do an AUG lock on his position.
Seriously. Come here, you bitch. <laughs> Stop playing with this freak. If he catches you off guard... Yeah, okay, enough of the running commentary, thank you. Steal the code from this bird brain and get to Silicarte Wells. Okay, I've got an idea. Stay frosty, sis. This guy's serious. So this is your great plan, huh? To hide forever. <laughs> it's over, Nilla. Show yourself. Thank you, Philippe. Nenen is going after 
the memorized CEO, Scylla Cartier-Wells, aiming at taking down the very technology that allows her to be who she is, a memory hunter. Many obstacles are going to stand in her way. Numerous enemies, other memory hunters just like her, with special powers just like her. But there is one superpower that only Nilin possesses in the game world, a unique power we call the memory remix. The ability to remix memories is this ability that Nilin has to dive into one of your memories, just change a few slight details, and then come back out of that memory to watch the butterfly effect consequences pan out onto your personality as an individual and ultimately onto the world. Now we're going to see this in action. In the following video, Nilin is being sent by Edge to remix the memories of Commander Forlan, who is the head of the Sabre, For Sabre Force, the private police of Memorize. And the following video is all gameplay footage. <laughs> This is the target, Frank Forlan, new commander of the Sabre Force. He's had a grudge against us for years, and now he's being promoted. He could be a real threat. Take him out for us. Take him out? You want me to kill him? No, I want you to remix his memories. Make him kill himself. It'll be less suspicious. Back. Probably hooked up with some politician already. Don't say that in front of Forlan. Hell, he fired my buddy just because he wouldn't shoot a beggar who got in the way. Maybe we should follow the wife so we can get out while we can. Are you nuts? The courthouse ceremony will begin shortly. We're heading to your office now. I know, I know. Just give me a minute. Calling Alexia. Unable to connect. Please leave a message. Alexia, damn it, call me. The whole of Paris will be watching my appointment ceremony. You can't let me down like this. I need you there. Message recorded. Selfish bitch. I gave you more than I ever took, Frank. You had my best years. Bullshit. You'll ruin my career before it's even started. Because I won't be standing next to you in a photo? Get real, Frank. I'm not gonna pretend anymore. Alex, don't you dare walk out! <laughs> Fuck you, Frank! Alex! Oh, 
bullshit. You'll ruin my career before it's even started. Because I won't be standing next to you in a photo? Get real, Frank. I'm not gonna pretend anymore. Alex, don't you dare walk out! <laughs> What are you gonna do? Shoot me? You can't even stand up straight. Be serious, Frank. You never even take the safety off. <gasps> and I'm tired of pretending. Goodbye, Frank. Please. You dare walk out! <laughs> what are you gonna do? Shoot me? You can't even stand up straight. Be serious, Frank. You never even take the safety off. Alex! Bastards. You're not taking me in for this. It was an accident. I won't give you the satisfaction. I'm so sorry, Alex. I'm so sorry. I think that gives us a lot to talk about in the next coming days here at Gamescom. I look very much forward to that, as well as I look forward to unveiling more about the game in the coming months. The game is coming out in May 2013 on the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. And this is it for today's presentation of Remember Me. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.